Hey you guys. So I want to tell you the story about this type of guitar. It's called a resonator guitar. It's really interesting. Even if you don't play the guitar, you might still be you might still find this story very interesting if you've ever been moved by the sound of a guitar. Which, if you think about it, is probably, if not every single time, almost every single time that you've been moved by music. We are, after all, talking about the guitar. So the story starts before the invention of the electric guitar in 1932. In the 1920s, there was a new sound that was becoming very popular, and it was the sound of a slide guitar, and it was Hawaiian. Hawaiian bands were popping up everywhere at that time, and they had a problem because the acoustic guitar just didn't have the volume and was often overwhelmed by the other instruments in the band. Even if the band was an all-guitar band, a single guitar could easily be overwhelmed by the other guitars. So the solution to that problem was the resonator guitar. The first resonator guitar was built in 1926 by a company called National. I'm going to talk about them in just a bit. They're important for our story. But you can see clearly from just looking at this guitar that it was built in the height of the Art Deco period of the 1920s. But of course, having been inspired uh, by Hawaiian music, it was very common for resonator guitars at that time to be decorated with all sorts of Hawaiian motif, like palm trees and beach scenes and things like that. But even though the resonator had been inspired by Hawaiian music, it didn't take long for blues guitarists to discover the resonator guitar. And today, there's a much stronger association between the uh, uh, resonator guitar and slide blues than with Hawaiian. And it's been played by many legendary blues guitarists. So how does it work? How does the resonator amplify sound? Well. This very nice resonator by Gretsch is going to help us find out. So if we look at the cover on the top part of the guitar, we can see through the holes of the cover that there's a cone, an aluminum cone inside there. That cone is responsible for 80 to 85 or more percent of the sound of the resonator guitar. And the way it works is that if you look at the top of the cover, right in the center, you'll see a round hole. And in there you see what's called a biscuit. It looks like a black disc sitting right on top of the cone. So we'll go ahead and remove the protector so we can have a better look at the biscuit. Okay, so now we can see the entire biscuit. And we can see that the strings go over what's called the saddle. The saddle is that part of the biscuit that protrudes up from the disc of the biscuit. The biscuit is made of maple, which is a very bright tone wood. So as the strings vibrate, the biscuit transmits an already bright sound down to the aluminum uh, cone, which vibrates and brightens it even more. And all of that resonates in the body of the guitar, which in this case happens to be made of brass. Brass, steel, and wood are the most commonly used materials for building resonator bodies, but other materials like copper are sometimes used too. Now check it out. We're going to make a modification to this guitar, and that'll give us the perfect reason to open it up, look inside, and see what it looks like in there and how it really works. So let me explain what we're going to do. You see, this, this Gretsch Honey Dipper Resonator is a very nice guitar. It's very nicely built. They use great uh, materials, good quality workmanship and it's got a very nice sounding cone. But like any uh, resonator that's not a national, this one here is has a defect. It's not a national. <laughs> There's something, the, the national cones are really very special. They're made of a very high quality uh, aluminum, and they're made in a special way that gives it a very nice ring to it, very crispy sound, wonderful tone separation. I really would like to own a national, but I can't afford one. This one here is right now selling for $3,000. I can't afford that but I can afford a national hot rod cone. So for about $100, I can build a poor man's national resonator, and that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, let's get started. First, we'll remove the tailpiece that's holding the strings over the guitar. 
Then we'll have to remove each one of the little screws around the cover. And then we're ready to pull back the cover and see what's inside. So there's the cone with the biscuit on top, and we'll just remove it. Now let's stop here a little bit and look inside the, the body uh, of the guitar. One of the reasons that blues players like uh, Resonator so much is because of the very metallic sound. So you have the strings vibrating this aluminum cone, and it resonates inside of this, the well that you can see here of this brass body, and it gives us that loud metallic quality. Okay, so now I've got to remove the biscuit. I'm going to use the same biscuit on the new cone. And here's the new cone by National. You can tell side by side that they look very similar because the Gretsch is an imitation of the National. It's a very good imitation, but it's not the real thing. We can tell that this is the real thing because of these symbols right here that look like shields that represent the National Guitar Company. And here we're j I'm just attaching the biscuit uh, onto the new national cone. Okay, so we're ready to put the cone back inside the guitar. By the way, this type of cone is, in co is called an inverted cone or a biscuit bridge. There are guitars that use the cone the other way around. This is inverted because it's, the cone is upside down. But uh, on spider resonators, for example, the cone is the other way around. And those are preferred by country musicians mostly because they're more twangy sound. But the inverted cone or biscuit bridge uh, resonator is usually preferred by blues guitarists because it's loud and the quality of the, the metallic quality of the sound. Okay, so we're just going to close the guitar back up. Just putting the cover on and then we'll put the strings back on it and the, the bridge protector. And then we'll be ready to play some blues on it because... That's what this is made for.